Hello. Today we'd like to talk a little bit about protecting sensors in difficult environments. The whole premise is that uh, any sensor, regardless of the brand or manufacturer or the type, will only perform as well as it's mounted, guarded, bunkered, and protected. And that goes for all categories of sensors. We tend to forget that in the world of inductive proximity sensing, the very short range sensors and their application specific, application specificity is the name of the game, putting the right things in the right place to do the right job. So we have to take those environmental uh, concerns into, a, into account and we're gonna talk about some of the things that help those sensors, both in the photoelectric and the inductive proximity world work better. So we're just gonna fly through some of these, but they're everyday off the shelf cataloged items that can help you and your process to keep machines running faster, better, more efficiently with less scrap and downtime. So first right in front of me is a photoelectric sensor. Comes in many different formats and diffuse reflective, retro reflective, through beam and laser, so forth. But there's some very rugged steel housings in which to mount these things on arms or on fixturing uh, to get the best performance possible out of them. When we get into some of the bad environments, there's uh, a lot of debris flying around often and the lenses can be vulnerable. So there's all of these little attachments, like these glass lenses are very robust, and they protect the investment of the, and the lensing of those opto sensors, those photoelectric sensors, on the business end of the sensor. We even have little uh, blow-off shields. These are really useful where we have a lot of mist, lube, or dust, and just by adding a little pneumatic line into the front of these, either in 12 or 18 millimeter, we can build up a pillow of air in front of the sensor to reduce uh, downtime and to keep debris from gathering on the lens so people don't have to maintain them as often. These are little uh, adjustment brackets that are very handy for those of you old enough to remember the old headlights on a car that were sealed beams. You had to adjust these uh, with, a, with a target to make sure that they are aimed properly when you replace them. Well, it kind of works on the same principle. There are three tension springs and once it's mounted down very flat in the, in the environment, um, and your manufacturing process, they're adjusted, the beams are adjusted with these high tension springs. And once it's mounted, it never goes out of, uh, out of adjustment. This can be very important when we're using precision sensing like lasers. So there's just a few ideas uh, uh, to consider in the world of uh, photoelectrics. In the world of uh, inductive proximity sensing, uh, from the very smallest to the very largest, uh, we have a very unique solution called Proxmount. I'm going to use this empty one right here because <clears throat> it really gets the message across of what this thing is all about. You'll see that there's a bevel on the end of this thing. It doesn't affect the sensing range at all, but it gives it a positive stop um, for the sensor. And once it's gapped and mounted on your machine, you take full advantage of the sensing range on the inductive sensor. And then when we slide a sensor into it like this, it stops at the end and that protects the most vulnerable end of an inductive prox switch right there where the face meets the barrel. Once there's a breach, they start uh, uh, degrading very rapidly. So these give you uh, the benefit of, of added end protection, rapid change out. That's a very good, uh, good feature. And some of these are also PTFE coated to resist weld slag accumulation. And they come in all types of, var of variants. Here's one that's made of, uh, of steel. These two are steel, and there's a reason. When we use a steel face sensor, if it's mounted in anything besides mild steel, it derates the sensing distance, something you don't want to have happen in your environment. That's why we make these steel mounts. They work the same way and add the same uh, benefits uh, to the system. And then there's a mount called an aluminum block with a positive stop. It just gives a lower profile to your sensing, and it can be adjusted back and forth in the world of welding, weld BBs do not like to stick to aluminum, so it's very apropos for those applications and for general applications as well. Both the bunker, what these uh, aluminum blocks and, and uh, prox mounts are made sizes 8 millimeter through 30 millimeter. When we get into the very, very high impact situations, we have to get very, very aggressive with uh, how we bunker these things, and that's done with these bunker blocks. This one is copper clad steel, so it can take impact and resist weld BBs, and then we have aluminum ones as well with prox mounts built in, so we always keep our adjustment and gapping. When we get into the very large uh, sensors like the limit switch style unisensor and the shorter unit compact sensor, how do we guard these things? Well, they have great range, but they can still take a lot of abuse. 
In that case, we have these very robust um, uh, hoods that go over them, either the short version right here, and then you just push it out to the end. And look at the protection you get. That can take a lot of abuse. Still see your LEDs on the top. That also fits the unisensor. There's another uh, enabler out there that uh, we call the, uh, the R01Z flat pack. It's a steel face sensor. It's phenomenal for welding and impact. Silicone cable, uh, a new coating on it that resists weld spatter accumulation. It has five millimeters of sensing range and it sees all metals at the same range. But how do we mount these things? Well, they are flush mountable. We can surround it in metal. But there's a very nice custom mount that just a pocket that it drops into and it comes with a kit with screws to both mount the, mount the actual uh, mount itself and then mount the sensor to the, uh, to the pocket. And that's what it looks like inside. And for those circumstances when we have sensors already uh, pre-mounted, we have a slip over hood, the things that are flush mounted so we can guard it. So side impact and those, those types of uh, events, it guards the sensor from being torn off the surface. <clears throat> That's something uh, very, very unique. We actually have customers that build those themselves. So, in the world of small inductive sensors with very tight ranges, like half a millimeter to a millimeter, how do we grab more range out of those without damaging the sensor? Well, these are little tube switches, very short throw mechanical actuators that have a target predetermined built in. And when the, the target hits this little, uh, little plunger, with a wiper in the front that keeps debris from entering the mechanism, we get an activation. So in a lot of cases, we need those kind of uh, uh, mechatronics to make our uh, applications work properly. This one is a, a larger one. Here's an 8mm model, and it works the same way. Very short throw. Another enabler. Um, there's another uh, product in the market, these mechanical actuators um, from various companies that are spring-loaded. And we have since come up with a self-contained product. It's called Plunger Prox for a lot of different applications, primarily in stamping and welding. But we've adapted, made a mount that everybody can recognize to adapt our Plunger Prox for use in those kind of applications. And getting near the end, we have uh, some of these other detent holders. They work very similar to the, uh, to the tube switch we just talked about. And there's a product called Cushion Mount. When you're going to get a hit, when you know there's no way around it, these little devices come for shielded and unshielded sensors. The cap screws on the front. It's adjustable and it's spring-loaded so that impacts aren't going to kill your sensor or throw it out of alignment. For more information, give us a call. Thank you.